Um, and uh, well, let's get started right away. Uh, on the contents for this uh, this presentation. Um, so uh, first off, I want to start with uh, GeoCAD Bridge 4.1. It's the latest release we did in uh, in last August uh, for Fuges. Uh, I would like to talk a bit about uh, what it is uh, for people who don't know that yet, uh, the design and architecture behind it, um, and then go uh, into depth in some latest changes. Um, then I would like to talk about Bridge Style, which is a library uh, that GeoCAD also uh, developed, uh, which is used by GeoCAD Bridge. Um, and is uh, based on GeoStyler. Uh, and uh, to conclude this presentation, I would like to talk about a new exciting uh, thing that we're working on, which is called Bridge Hub. Uh, but more about that later. So, Juca Bridge for QGIS. Um, what is it for the people who don't know this yet? Uh, it is a desktop publishing tool uh, plugin for QGIS uh, to help publish metadata and data, so map layers, uh, to various uh, open platforms like GeoNetwork, PostGIS, GeoServer, and Server. Um, we support several metadata standards, ISO standards. Uh, so you can convert from uh, from the QML uh, internal metadata standard to uh, to the, uh, the international standard. Um, then uh, with data you can publish to a geo package or to a PostGIS database, at least for uh, GeoServer. Um, and uh, recently we also added a new style format, uh, which is the Mapbox style. Uh, so that's a JSON-based style for uh, vector tiles. Um, the whole ecosystem that perhaps people don't know that, um, so there's a whole ecosystem uh, for Bridge. Um, we, uh, as GeoCAD, we developed Bridge uh, uh, a while ago already, like I think, first development started like more than 10 years ago with a bridge for ArcGIS, or ArcMap to be specific. And it was uh, mainly a tool to also help us publish data uh, to GeoNetwork and GeoServer, uh, a, a very tedious task to do. So that's how it started. Um, we Currently, still develop uh, the RTS plugin, and we're also uh, developing the RTS Pro plugin uh, at the moment. That has not been released yet. Uh, that will probably be shortly before Christmas or maybe after. Not sure yet. Um, anyway, um, I think it was the um, Postgres Bucharest edition um, where uh, uh, the the first bridge for QGIS was uh, revealed. That was uh, version four. Um, and uh, well, to be honest, last year was a bit uh, hectic. <laughs> and uh, we didn't work that much on bridge for QGIS. Uh, but like I said, last August, we have released version 4.1, uh, both for the community edition and the enterprise edition. That also supports uh, GeoCAD Live. Uh, that's our hosted solution for um, enterprise users. Uh, so you can publish to GeoNetwork and GeoServer. Um, and then there is this Bridge Hub thing, which is uh, also an exciting new thing. And I will talk about that uh, at the end of this presentation. So uh, the design and architecture is as follows um, there is uh, so you have a typical QGIS user um, and he can use or she can use the, the bridge plugin uh, available on the QGIS plugin repository um, to publish data to GeoNetwork, uh, GeoServer or MapServer. 
uh, that's also supported. Um, you can publish to GeoServer directly, um, uh, and that's that uses the REST API that GeoServer provides, or um, you can use uh, you can publish uh, uh, you can publish to uh, a PostGIS database, and then let have GeoServer connect to that if you have direct access to the PostGIS database. That is. Uh, it's also possible to publish to uh, a file storage on GeoServer um, or locally. So you can just publish to your own machine. Uh, and this is also the route that is because an FTP upload will take place that uh, publishes the map files and so on to map server. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, Bridge uses the Bridge style and Bridge metadata library, uh, Python library, to uh, to assist in the conversion of uh, metadata and um, and style formats. Um, and um, this is how the architecture uh, looks. Um, uh, sim simply spoken. <laughs> Uh, so there's QGIS 3, uh, there's the bridge core uh, that also uses the, the QT technology uh, to provide uh, the UI experience to QGIS users. It all runs on Python 3. Um, and there's the bridge style metadata and the bridge, uh, the bridge style and the bridge metadata libraries, the dependencies. And uh, this is new for this release. Uh, we also have uh, the server plugin uh, structure, we introduced that. Uh, so this will allow us and hopefully also other developers to uh, create their own uh, server plugins so that they can connect Bridge to um, some database server or, uh, or a map server or whatever. Um, so the latest changes uh, like I said, there's the server plugin system that follows a model view view model approach. So uh, to uh, at first, this was all very tightly integrated and all lots of hard coded stuff. So uh, we tore that all out and put that in a in a separate uh, plugin system to make it uh, more convenient also for ourselves. Um, then uh, we renamed the multi styler. Uh, tool. Uh, we'll show a screenshot about uh, of that later. To the style viewer, because uh, well, multi styler gave a bit of the impression that it was also that it could be used to style data, but it's only for viewing purposes. So, uh, hence the new name. We improved uh, the user experience and the UI a little. Uh, there's enhanced logging, so you can. Uh, see now what goes wrong if something goes wrong uh, and it's a bit more clear to tell where it went wrong uh, so you it's always a good idea to keep the QGIS log messages panel open um, and on the GeoGuide bridge tab you can see these log messages uh, going by uh, there's uh, an improved publishing workflow to GeoServer uh, to uh, GeoServer's REST API that uh, was a bit uh, buggy but uh, that has been improved now um, and we also fixed some other bugs uh, also in bridge style and as always with software development we probably also introduce some new bugs but uh, uh, yeah we'll, we'll see uh, if uh, people report that that's actually something i didn't mention here uh, the the reporting system for errors has also been uh, greatly improved so it's a lot easier now to uh, uh, to report an error to us uh, so we can actually see that something is wrong. Um, and for an upcoming release, uh, has not been scheduled yet. Uh, I can already tell that uh, one of the biggest um, things, uh, uh, one of the biggest uh, things that people wanted to see in uh, Bridge uh, and that we are about to develop is the publication of individual layers to a GeoServer workspace. Uh, at the moment, uh, Bridge always deletes an entire workspace and overwrites it with whatever you want to publish. Um, 
and uh, lots of QGIS users have uh, indicated that um, that they they w don't like that and that they want uh, to add individual layers on top of the layers that already exist in a workspace. Um, so this is something that we are uh, that we're working on. Um, the published panel has a slightly slightly different look, um, but uh, most of the stuff has remained the same. Um, so uh, there is a now there is a, a clear all button here uh, to remove all the data um, from the from the server that you selected, uh, all the data within the workspace that is that is new here. Um, then on the server panel uh, here is where you can configure your servers. This is uh, also being changed a little. You can. Uh, Test the connection um, and provide the information to uh, where the data must be stored. In this case, for your server, uh, you can easily duplicate servers, so you could just try out something if you want uh, and then remove them again. Uh, and the import export uh, to JSON um, of this configuration is also very handy. So you can uh, you can share the the configurations with other people, for instance. Uh, like I said, MultiStyler has been renamed to Style Viewer, so uh, it's still the same thing. Uh, but uh, yeah, as you can see, there's also a Mapbox uh, tab here that shows the Mapbox JSON style. Um, and uh, that concludes uh, the latest changes. Uh, so now we can talk about bridge style uh, and geostyler. Uh, so bridge style is a um, is a library that converts map styles between various formats and is used internally by uh, GeoCAD Bridge. It has an open source MIT license, um, and uh, the latest additions uh, in style formats are a Mapbox style, like as mentioned before, but also Esri uh, cartographic information model. That's also a JSON format that is used by RTS Pro. Um, we also offer a, a command line interface uh, to bridge style. So with the style to style uh, commands, you can also um, integrate it uh, in, uh, in some bash script or, uh, or whatever you like. Um, and then uh, call the, the various conversion methods. Um, the whole project is available on GitHub. It's a uh, uh, truly open source uh, project, uh, as is uh, uh, GCAD Bridge for QGIS, actually. Um, it's uh, also used uh, by QGIS to web by Tom Chatwin. Um, uh, so that's another QGIS plugin that uses it. And uh, yeah, we very much welcome collaboration on this uh, plugin. Um, I have to say, though, that's what the but mentions. Uh, we have some plans for this for the future, and uh, that brings about the next topic, which is GeoStyler, uh, because bridge style is uh, actually sort of a, a Python port of GeoStyler. GeoStyler is a is a is a is a styler uh, library. Uh, and also a tool actually running in Node.js, uh, so written in, in JavaScript and TypeScript. Uh, it's being made by Terrestrits, uh, and it's it's a really nice product, and it's getting more and more mature uh, every time I look at it. Uh, there was a nice presentation yesterday uh, by Jan Suleiman from uh, Terrestrits um, that. Uh, well, explained all the uh, all the details about GeoStyler and all the great stuff that they've been working on. Um, yeah, I uh, we we believe uh, at GeoCAD that we should uh, stick more closely to this GeoStyler uh, format, uh, or well, not really a format, more an exchange standard. Um, and uh, in because of that, we would. We are thinking of slowly phasing out uh, the, the bridge style library. Um, 
and uh, have a more tight integration with uh, with GeoStyler. Um, so that brings us to this uh, topic, which is uh, Bridge Hub. Um, this is a, a new idea we have. It's an, uh, a REST API uh, that can be used for MapStar conversions and metadata conversions and possibly lots of other stuff uh, in the future. We don't know yet uh, what the future will bring, but uh, we, uh, have really saw, uh, we really have some exciting ideas for this. Um, um, so we're thinking of uh, uh, then having two different things, a community version, uh, which uh, users uh, can install and run locally. Uh, so it's, it's just a, a little REST API server, like a, for instance, Fast API or something. Um, and, uh, or users, uh, community users could also use the cloud-based uh, SaaS, so software as a service, uh, which will be hosted by us. Um, and then there are also plans to have an enterprise version, which is of course uh, available as an on-premises solution or also cloud-based and then obviously a paid uh, solution. Um, and the idea of Bridge Hub is, is that we can integrate all this technology. So GeoStyler based on Node.js, uh, our own bridge style, if we still need it uh, running on Python, uh, metadata conversions. So either perhaps using the GeoNetwork API uh, or some other metadata converters um, uh, and then have it all uh, uh, using a Swagger API so that it's uh, clear which, uh, which routes are available to the user. Um, perhaps also some user uh, uh, management uh, like uh, connected to, to LDAP or something, of course, for our enterprise users. Uh, we have all these all these ideas and we want to uh, merge this all in one big tool which is called the uh, bridge hub so the, uh, going back to the one of the earlier slides this is the current design of uh, of, of bridge for fugis and in the future we would like this to be like this so there still is the the client uh, the desktop client for uh, for bridge but there will also be Bridge Hub running, uh, like I said, uh, locally on prem or in the cloud uh, that provides the style and metadata conversions uh, and also tightly integrates GeoStyler uh, in, uh, in this whole picture. Uh, so future plans and ideas uh, that we have uh, like I said, we, we would like to phase out bridge style in favor of GeoStyler, which also means that we as GeoCAD would like to contribute more to, uh, to GeoStyler development. Uh, currently, GeoStyler does not support uh, the, uh, the ESRI cartographic information model, for instance, uh, but uh, bridge style does, although it still has uh, limitations, of course. Uh, GeoStyler also doesn't have uh, the possibility to write map files, if I'm uh, not mistaken. Uh, BridgeStyle does, so I think we uh, we could really collaborate with each other on that to make that work. Um, so then, uh, of course, we need to incorporate this this hub workflow into our GeoCAPS Bridge product line, um, and uh, we we can offer perhaps user-based access for enterprise customers. Uh, so maybe they want to connect it to some help app. Uh, uh, I don't know. Or, uh, we could provide a free tier, of course, for community users with limitations, obviously, because uh, well, if everyone starts using this, uh, uh, we, we don't know yet how much traffic that will that will generate. Or, but uh, uh, I think uh, for community users, uh, free tier would be very cool to have um, and perhaps also we could integrate it with other uh, tools like i don't know uh, fme or uh, we, we're 
still very much in the uh, experimental phase now. But uh, um, yeah, there's lots of uh, cool things coming up. All right. That was it. Thank you very much. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Sander and Paul. That was uh, that was some very, uh, very exciting news and developments on uh, on bridge. We have some questions from the audience. So first question, will it be possible to convert ArcGIS Pro style to GeoServer? Um, so uh, ArcGIS Pro to um, uh, to SLD, that is then. Okay. Um, yeah, well, it, it's not possible with the uh, QGIS bridge plugin, obviously, uh, because uh, well, it's not an uh, ESRI uh, related product, but the bridge style uh, library used by uh, by bridge uh, for QGIS uh, can um, import um, the, the the ESRI sim file, so that's the ArcGIS Pro format. And convert it to um, to SLD. So uh, uh, for for who was asking, uh, I would check out the bridge style library uh, on GitHub, um, and you can uh, run the style to style uh, command line tool uh, to make this happen. Great. Next question: Does the plugin copy local data to a server? What is the best way to keep data in sync? Uh, yeah, so that's that's uh, an interesting question. Uh, uh, it's uh, yeah, it's a very uh, hard uh, thing to, to manage. Um, so yes, uh, what the plugin does is it it uh, it zips up the, the local data and copies it to a server. Um, so it uses for GeoServer, for instance, it uses, uh, if you want to publish to uh, PostGIS uh, and you want GeoServer to do that for you. So if you don't have direct access to PostGIS, um, it uses the importer extension uh, by GeoServer and then um, that will take care of the uh, publication to the, to the PostGIS database uh, or it will be stored uh, on GeoServer as a, as a file-based format, so GeoPackage, for instance. Um, and because of this, uh, the, I mean, the best way to keep data in sync, uh, because of that, exactly this problem, uh, we initially said uh, that Bridge should remove uh, the entire workspace from GeoServer whenever you want to publish to a certain workspace. Uh, so basically what you're doing every time you, you overwrite the whole thing, and this is to make sure that uh, the data remains in sync uh, because it was very, very hard to solve this problem uh, otherwise. Uh, perhaps Paul can also elaborate on this. Yeah, so, so what you forget to mention is that we also have the option to, to uh, use an existing database as a source uh, for your data in, in QGIS yeah. and then just uh, create the layer by reference on GeoServer. It does mean yeah. that both QGIS and GeoServer need to be connected to the same uh, Postgres database. So this will not work if the database is behind the firewall in, in the DMZ, for example. But it's a, it's a good option to, to keep your, a connection to the live data. Next question. Um, how can the plugin be used to manage uh, multi, multiple environments? So, for example, a test or development environment, a staging environment, uh, production, and vice versa for data? Uh, I wouldn't know if they have to solve this uh, at the moment. Perhaps Paul knows. Yes, what we usually do is we create uh, multiple servers, so one for the production, one for the acceptance, and then on the publish panel, you just select first the acceptance environment, publish to that one, see if it's okay, and then you publish to the production environment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, yeah, of course, but that, that uh, you can you can basically uh, uh, you can make uh, an unlimited amount of connections to any kind of server. Yeah, 
uh, but you have to keep track of where you're publishing to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so that, that's what I like about the data hub ID is that that uh, once we have the data hub, we can uh, also use like a, uh, a direct access to the data hub to give like a pre-configured uh, publication and then let the data hub manage to push it to any server. Next question: How about exchanging ArcGIS style files? Yeah, that's a it's a bit of a tricky one in our opinion uh, since this is a proprietary uh, esri technology you you really need a, a esri license to to work with these layer files um, that's why we developed the bridge for arcgis which uh, is a plug into the arcgis system so if you have an arcgis license you're, you're able to work with that layer files i know there's other uh, products out there that actually try to refactor that layer file, but that's that's not our uh, vision on how it, things should work. It's also not very legal, I think. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, so the the layer uh, the, the layer files uh, can only be opened with Arc objects, so you, you would have to use an Arc, uh, ArcGIS license to open that. Yeah. Um. Okay, next question. Um, as I understand it, Bridge Styler is Python and GeoStyler is JavaScript. So will the planned Bridge Hub also be written in JavaScript? Um, well, uh, we, um, we are very much in doubt <laughs> at the moment and searching a bit uh, whether we should develop this whole, uh, this, this Bridge Hub API fully in, in uh, JavaScript or TypeScript. Um, or in Python, um, in the beginning, it will very much be a hybrid between the two. So we have to see how we can uh, combine these two. It's not ideal, uh, but because we still have things that we need from bridge style, which is Python, uh, we can't fully phase out Python yet. Uh, so, uh, but yes, in the future, the whole thing might be written in Node. Okay. Yeah. 